Hello, and in today's video, we're going to be teaching you how to pass a bleed through the brand new Shimano Altero 12 speed. And this will also apply for the new Shimano Durace 12 speed as well. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you what tools you need to go ahead and pass a bleed through uh, for this right here. What tools you need for the brake calipers as well. And we'll go over the whole process step by step. So the tools that you'll be needing to do to perform this bleed, you will need a uh, pretty much a three millimeter Allen key and also a two and a half for the parts on the caliper to allow it to open up. We're going to need a tool in this case to remove the through axle for the front wheel. So a five or six millimeter, depending on your bike manufacturer. We're going to be using today Shimano hydraulic mineral oil, but you can use any brand mineral oil. I always prefer to use Shimano with Shimano, but I've gotten away with a uh, finish line or other companies as well. Um, yes, you're going to need a cup of some sort. That is, uh, they, they provide that it threads into here. We'll also be needing the adapters that goes on here because the port on the shifter hole is much bigger, so you're gonna need this. The newer versions of the Shimano bleed kits will already come with the cup being this size diam diameter, so if you do have the newer bleed kit, you will not need the adapter. And then a syringe to go inside of the caliper uh, to plug in to push fluid up in there. And then for the cleaning process, some form of isopropylene alcohol. They do also make bike-specific brake uh, disc brake cleaners as well. You can use that. Just make sure it's safe for your uh, your caliper and stuff like that. But I always just prefer a nice ice propylene alcohol that we're going to spray on the shifters and also the caliper. And then some kind of shop rags, paper towels do just fine as well. Start off by removing your front wheel because you do not want to have your front wheel inside your brake while bleeding it because you can contaminate the rotor and also your pads. So we're going to remove those next. Once your wheel is out, you're going to go ahead and remove the pads. So you're going to need to remove this little cotter pin right here, attached to this little rod that attaches the pads. So we can pull this out. And we're gonna to wanna to place that aside to somewhere else that we will remember where to put it at. Do not lose that, it's important. And then we're gonna take our three millimeter Allen key to go ahead and remove the rod that is holding the brake pads in place. And again, if you are bleeding brakes, when you take them out and also when you put them back in, you want to make sure that your hands are clean of any kind of oils or anything like that from the ble brake bleeding process because you do not want to contaminate your pads when putting them back in. Once the pads have been removed, we want to check inside the caliper if the, the brake has been used for a while. Sometimes your pistons inside here have been pushed in. We want to go ahead and reset the pistons. So I'll get a tool like this to go ahead and push in on both sides. This is like a 10 millimeter crescent wrench just to go ahead and reset the pistons. And then we take a bleed block like so. It's just done by Shimano. Your bleed kit should come with one, but you are gonna want something to go ahead and sit inside of your brake caliper um, while you do this bleed process. Because if you're pushing fluid through without a bleed block inside of there, then basically what's going to happen is that your piston is just gonna be pushing through without it. So place the bleed block in like so. Then we're going to take our little pin that we have here for our disc brake. And we're going to shove that back in there. And we wanna make sure it's snug so it does not move. Now it's in place. So now that we've prepped the caliper, let's go ahead and prep the shifter. So before we open up any of the ports, we wanna go ahead and prep the shifter. I like to go ahead and prep the shifter by pulling back the rubber hood to expose the bleed port on top of the shifter. The best thing that Shimano did was that they replaced this bolt nut head size from last year's, which used to be like a two, and I think they replaced it to a 2.5 millimeter Allen key. That was the best thing ever because if you're ever a mechanic or work on these things a lot, you would know to yourself that they actually stripped a lot. But with your brake caliper ports being closed and we haven't touched those yet, we're going to uh, pop this thing open. So we go ahead and open this up, like so. And we're gonna take our bolt and put it aside again because we do not want to lose that and then we're going to attach our our cup on top here with the adapter piece as well and as we can see it's just a little hole like so with some fluid there now if you were to open up the hole or the bleed port on the caliper right now with this open what that means is that there's nothing stopping it or nothing creating a suction, so all the fluid will come out. So you always wanna keep one size closed when working with these. So we're gonna tighten this up like this. Tighten it down, make sure it's snug. Now that we have our adapter on with the cup, 
we're good to go. And I also have my plug now, so that's creating a seal. So before we do anything, we're going to go ahead to the copper. Little word on advice of these things too. This is plastic. You don't need to make sure this thing's wrenched super tight. You just wanna make sure it's snug. It has a rubber O-ring seal on there. It's gonna stop the, the flow of fluid coming out. Just make sure it's tight, snug, with your fingers. It's good enough. You don't need to put a wrench on there. So now for the brake caliper to prep, go ahead and put it on the syringe on there. There are two rubber ports on here that are covering your bleed port. We have one right here and one right here. This side is where you're going to attach the syringe at. This side is pretty much your, your floodgate. Your flood this is where you're going to loosen up the bolt to allow the fluid to be pushed through. So you can loosen these up right now or you can take off the rubber. Uh, caps right now because they will not come out. Let me get a tool real quick, sorry. I have just a little rubber flathead of this. Take that off. And I'll show you what this looks like in a second. And you're gonna put these little rubber caps aside. Like so. So as we can see, this is where you're going to attach a syringe at. The rubber hose is gonna go right into there. This right here is where you're going to stick in a three millimeter Allen key. This is basically like a pinch bolt to stop fluid from coming out. So you can't push any fluid through here right now. You have to loosen this up, and it's much easier to do. So we're going to fill up the, the syringe with some fluid. We're going to attach it to this nipple right here, and then we're going to loosen this up with our tool. So determining how much fluid you want to put into your syringe is all determining on the job you're doing. If you replace a whole new brake line with uh, no fluid inside there, you're going to want to fill up your syringe a lot. If you are cutting your brake hoses or if you have an internally routed bike and you have to uh, put on an internal cable or, or internal handlebar, something like that, and you only lose a little bit of fluid through the, uh, the uh, shifter itself, then you only need to fill up halfway. Because this bike is brand new, I could probably just get away with filling this thing up. I mean, this is way too much excess, but I'm going to go up to about halfway, all right? And again, you might want to do it on something that's not carpet. Do it on a workspace area. Do it outside. Do it on the... Uh, Somewhere you know you can get a little bit messy and you can clean up afterwards. Now that I have everything set up, I'm going to pull out my stopper for the cup because I already have a connection on the bottom. Everything's still closed on there, so no fluid's going to come out. I'm going to get ready to go ahead and put the, uh, the fluid into the caliper. All right, so I have my tool in place. I'm going to take my syringe, carefully place it over the nipple like so. Now that we have our syringe on our bleed port, I'm going to loosen this up, break it, it might be a little bit tight, open it up. And you can see that little bubble right there? That's fine, that's just from the connection of me opening it up. I'm gonna push enough fluid anyways in, the, in there, so that way it should all come out at the top anyways. So I, I gave it like a nice half turn, quarter turn, three quarters turn, whatever it is. Now we're just gonna push fluid into it, nice and slowly. Let me get a shot from the top real quick. So as I'm pushing fluid in, we should see the cup start to fill up and see a little bit of air bubbles right there. I will also this time while pushing fluid through, I'll take this and kind of give the brake lever a couple squeezes. Whatever kind of fluid that's inside there, it's a cup like that. Now that we have enough fluid through there, we're good to go. Now, while I have the cup still attached and there's fluid up into the cup now that's blocking the bleed port, we're going to close off our bleed floodgate right here. I'm going to make it snug and we'll go back and torque that later. We're going to take off our syringe from our bleed nipple. Excess fluid will come out, so maybe have a rag with there. This is a shop floor, so I really don't care. Take this syringe and put it to the side and then we'll go back up to the shifter and I'll tell you what to do. All right, so once this is closed and it's tight and we know it's secured, we're going to go back over to the cup and our shifter. And now everything's closed off, so this is pretty much just like a brake. And I want to make sure that's nice and stiff. It's nice and firm. It's actuated. It feels like a brake would. Basically, that bleed block is acting like a disc brake in there, and it feels like a brake is. I'm happy with that is. So we're going to take our stopper plug now for our cup to seal us off before we remove it because we don't want this fluid to go everywhere. And now we remove the cup, which I'll show you guys right now. Again, don't twist from the top. If you have an adapter, we're going to twist from the bottom and try to remove this cup nice and easy. 
And the, what we want, don't want to do is spill any kind of excess. I know this looks kind of boring, but I'm giving you guys a real live action of it. If it spills, I'm gonna keep it in the video. This is very hard to film and do at the same time. But at home, it's pretty simple. If it spills, it's not a big deal. It's just oil. It's not as corrosive as like a dot flute or something like that. Boom. And a good sign for a bleed, what you want to see right there, you see the bleed port, how there's fluid right at the top of it. That's a great sign. That means that the, the fluid, the, the whole system is full. What we do now is we take our bleed port screw that we put aside. We grab our two and a half millimeter Allen key. We attach to that screw. Go ahead and tighten up. Make sure, please make sure we do not cross thread here. If it feels like it's going crappy and it's not going smooth right away, it probably is. Back it off, try again. And that's good. Now for cleaning. Grab your rag, grab your ice pill over the alcohol. In this case, alcohol is our friend. It's never my friend. So we spray an excessive amount on there. This stuff will dry. And we want to clean off the massive amounts of excess. If you guys want and you're at home and you have the ability to leave it open for a little bit, that's fine. Um, but we want to get in there as best we can to kind of clean off any kind of residue mineral oil that went to the sides. Bad thing about mineral oil going to the sides or getting underneath the hoods is that it can cause your hoods to slip around. Um, and maybe you'll have those loose hoods. If you ever pe see people with like really clapped out hoods, um, that's probably because of the fact they one, either sweat, but two, usually like a brake leak or something like that, or maybe just like a bad bleed got in there. But we'll let that dry. Now to the caliper. Put our three millimeter Allen key inside here. Take out all of our, our screw. Remove the bleed block. Do not squeeze the brake when the bleed block is removed. Again, excessive amount of isopropyl alcohol down here. Uh, more is better. And we're just going to clean up around here. This is, a, this is a pretty crucial part because this is where you will get that contamination on your brake or rotors and that will cause that squealing time. So if you want to, hit this a couple times. Make sure you get in there. Um, and then crucial point after you get done cleaning, Take off your gloves, or if you're doing a bare hand, wash your hands, step away, let them dry for a second before you go ahead and grab your pads again. But before we uh, put our rubber stoppers back over these ports, we wanna make sure this thing is all good to go. Bleed port rubber nipple stopper, yeah. Other rubber nipple stopper floodgate thing, yeah. Brake pads installed. As you can see, I want bare hands. I want to make sure my gloves are clean. The brake pads are labeled L and R for left and right. So we're going to put this in. Left is considered when you're standing over the bike. So left goes on the non-drive. Right goes on the drive. Our calipers are good to go. I'm going to push them up from up here. We're going to get our black little screw and shove it back in here. You might need a little flathead screwdriver or something to pull up the this little piece right here. So you see that little silver separate piece? Sometimes it goes down a little bit deeper. Um, grab like a little flathead or, or a little Allen key or something like that and bring it up. Just make sure whatever tool you are using is not contaminated. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Tiny, tiny little bit of flathead. Go like this. Lift her up a little bit. Get in there, push it down a little bit. There we go. Push it back over, loosen her up. Boom, bada bing, bada boom. Tighten her down. Snug her up. And these can all be done with torque specs again. You can go over them. I'm just showing you guys a point of reference. They can all be found probably online. We got a little cotter pin. Cotter pin that we have from before. And it is marked and it has a spot to go on and we put it right where it needs to go. Give the brake a squeeze. Money. Oh God. That wasn't supposed to be in the video. Anyways. It feels great. Sometimes if you are pushing fluid all the way through in a new line, this might go all the way down first. Give it a couple pumps. It should settle in, but this thing feels dead solid. Does not feel spongy. It feels great. If it feels spongy again, there might be some air in the system. Go ahead and pass the bleed there one more time, um, but you should be good to go. And that, my fellow friends, is how to bleed a brake. And that, my friends, is how you bleed a brake. Thank you guys again so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, 
give it a thumbs up. If you guys don't want to give it a thumbs up, I don't care either. Don't give it a thumbs up. Hopefully, I helped you guys out. If you guys have any questions, leave me a comment down below. I'll answer you guys whatever I can. This is the same process for the new Shimano Altegra 12-speed, the new Shimano Durace 12-speed, and I believe as well the new Shimano 105. So this should be a guide for you guys. Any questions at all, let me know down below. I'll help you guys out.